Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter. And today I thought I'd share some ideas for Christmas gifts. And that's gifts for people that you want to share the gift of art with. Someone who has expressed an interest perhaps in creativity and painting and drawing and coloring and making cards. And you can share your love and your passion with them by giving them a gift that will mean a lot to them. I'm going to start with coloring books because coloring books for most people are an easy entree. They aren't as intimidated with that kind of a thing. And I'll share two different brands with you that I like. One is Painterly Days. These are a bunch of different designs that you can get for the whole theme of the book. But I'm going to be using these watercolors, which are actually this little set of 12 as a giveaway that I bought special for this video so that I could give away a set. It has 12 colors in it. They're really just generic colors, so they're going to work for a lot of different things here. They are swatched out for you so you can see what colors are in there. And they're gouache sort of paints rather than true watercolors, but I started with these. These were one of my first watercolors that I used, and they work great. They're just a really simple way to entree into watercoloring. I'm using an aqua brush here, so you could either get them a regular brush or an aqua brush. And all you do is pick up the paint on the tip, put the tip toward the center of the flower, and then squeeze the brush so water comes out on the, the end where your hand is coming from. So it kind of draws that color out and makes some natural shading on the flower itself. And they're really easy to paint this way. It's really actually easy to learn how to paint flower shapes because as you practice painting with these flowers, you'll learn what a pl flower petal looks like. How is it formed? And these are good for doing those kind of studies. But coloring books are a great way to get somebody started. So be sure to go to my blog to enter to win that set of paints right there. Now there's another line of books that I've also loved and it's called uh, they're, they're by a company called Pepin, and they're all different kinds of designs, different ethnicity type designs, but what I recommend with these is the Zig Clean Color Markers. And the Zig markers blend without actually having to use any water with them, which is one of the benefits I like from them. And you can see that I've drawn some darker lines around the outside edges and then filled in with a lighter color. And that is going to allow you to do some things that look like shading, even though you didn't have to do a whole lot to get them to blend. You don't have to use water. You can use water with them, but you don't have to. And these designs are mesmerizing in these books. There's a lot of different types of designs, and some are more complex, some are simpler. There's some flower ones, all different kinds. And I've put together this set of 12 colors that I like and you can choose whether or not you like those colors, but you can see they make a good rainbow and that's all blended with no water. So that is one of the benefits of the Zig markers because they blend without having to have more supplies on hand. So you can get them a brush to go with it if you wish. Now let's talk Copics because lots of people want to start with Copics and I'm going to come up with a couple different sets of flowers, a couple of different sets of colors. We're going to start with flowers first, pinks and reds. And you can choose either the pinks or the reds or get both for your gift recipient if you wish. And I'm recommending some all to new flower stamp sets if you want to get them a stamp set to go with it. Because all to new makes stamps with these nice heavy lines. And for somebody who's new coloring with Copics, heavy lines are going to be a little easier to deal with. And if they like flowers, this pen rose is really, really beautiful. And it's also easy to color because there's uh, those nice heavy lines. And I was experimenting here with, can I get some roses that look different shades by how much of each color that I use? And you can do a lot of fun, different things with a limited set of markers. And I've given you two greens to use for these as well. This is another one of the sets from them using the same colors again, not having to stray outside of that. So if you wanted to get a couple of stamp sets or choose one of these, and here's another one, beautiful stamps, easy to color with these good heavy lines. So that is the flower section. Now let's look at animals. There's some people that just love drawing animals. Animal stamps, if they get into the realistic side, are gonna have thinner lines, just so you know. If you want to do something with heavier lines, then you get into more like the lawn fawn or paper smooches, that kind of thing. But I'll focus here on more realistic animals for those who like to draw those sort of things. A simple set of browns and grays will get you really far. You can do a lot of varieties of things. Here I've got one stamp that I've used and I'm coloring one with browns and one with grays. 
and just alternating the the colors on the scarf and the beak and the feet and things depending on which color I used for the bird itself. And that is one of the things that you can look at the stamps that you give them and what colors are they going to need to color those particular images. You could also stamp out some images that you have and just already have them stamped on paper for them, which reminds me, make sure you give them some Copic friendly paper so that they are able to actually use them. Whatever you give them in this gift, make sure it's complete enough that they can use it on Christmas morning. Even if you just cut up some paper from your stash to give them something or have some pre-stamped images so they're ready to go. Cause it's always fun on Christmas morning to be able to make something. So here I just die cut these with a circle die and put them on round bases to make some really simple, beautiful animal cards. Now there's the advanced people that might want to do people people. And so I've put together a wider list of colors. And here I have a strong recommendation where I've given you my colors for my favorite Caucasian skin tones. That uses the blue violet. If you haven't seen my videos, go find one of them that colors people with a blue violet and make sure you send the person the video so that they know why you gave them a blue violet color. <laughs> They need to know that so that they don't think you're crazy and you just picked out this random weird blue violet color. But for her, I've chosen those skin tone colors and then I've just done one color for her hair. So depending on what color that person's hair is or if they have a daughter who's blonde, you might want to get him a color that works for blonde hair. But I'm not doing any multiple shading in the hair. I'm going to focus more on the colors that are here for the dress. And I've also chosen a stamp that is a good one for for a valentine because remember you're giving a christmas gift to somebody don't give them a christmas stamp give them something they're, they're going to use for spring and this stamp could also be a, a, a springtime thing so they have more life out of it rather than giving them something for christmas that is already over by christmas morning and here i'm just going to do some shading with these are my favorite reds but you can choose whatever colors you want you can go to the other pinks that i had given you before and choose some colors that are going to go with the stamp set that you give them. You could also open the stamp set carefully. Just be real careful so it doesn't look like you've used the stamp set. And take, some, take the stamps out and stamp them and color them for the person first. And give them a card. And then give them maybe the stamped image along with the markers so that they can replicate what you've done. It's going to help to teach them and just put it back carefully so <laughs> they don't think that you've, well, you know, I guess they know that you've opened it, but I just want to make sure that you actually um, focus on making sure the gift looks good to them. But you're also giving them some education as well. You could also pick a stamp set that there is a video for on YouTube that you love to go get that stamp set and some markers to go with it and then send them the link to the video on Christmas morning. And that way they can go watch it and learn how to color that thing. So that's kind of a cool thing. You could also gift them an online class, which I will be talking about a few minutes from now about how you can provide them with some craft or art education as well. But you can see here that I'm using blue greens for my greens on this. So don't feel like you have to get them greens just because there's flowers in this picture. And then I did an alternate coloring where I have the dress in the flipped colors. So it gives more options for the same set of markers to be able to do something different. Now let's move on to watercolor. And I love the Daniel Smith watercolors. If you know what I've been doing lately, I've just been Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith. And this set of essentials is really flexible. You can get a lot of different colors out of it because yellow, red, and blue make all different varieties of colors. So you have two different yellows, two different reds, two different blues. There's videos on my YouTube channel about how to use this set in particular, how to make a color chart for it, etc. But you don't even actually have to know all that. Just I put some pink and some yellow onto a palette. And this is not a fancy palette. This is an 89 cent one that I got at Home Depot. It's just a piece of white ceramic tile and works great for a palette for mixing colors. I've put down two colors, smushed them together so I can get some pinks oranges and yellows on these peonies and I've chosen these these flowers as well as some others of the essentials by Ellen to recommend 
she has these gorgeous huge flowers which are really easy for somebody new to watercolor to paint and you can see here I'm just throwing color on just a little bit of color at the inside of the petals and then taking some clean water to move the color around and leaving some white spots you know don't feel like you have to fill in everything this is not Copic marker it's looser it's watercolor so just let it be what it is and I'm just gonna paint the color around here now let me talk a little bit about those classes I mentioned I have a watercolor class on my blog as well as a Copic jumpstart class and just for this period right now, until Christmas, I am offering a gift version of the class, which means if you sign up and purchase this class, you can gift it to someone else. So there will be instructions on the web on how to do that, but I will send them an email on Christmas morning saying this class has been given to you, and there will also be a download that you can send along with your gift and wrap up and say you've been given this class, okay? So I'm gonna finish up the watercolor on this one by putting some blue and some yellow onto my palette and just letting those colors mix for a background and make it just a really soft, light background. Daniel Smith colors are nice and transparent, so you're getting this really sort of soft color. The Gansai Tambies that I showed you earlier end up looking a little bit chalkier, that's all. That's the big difference between them. But here are two cards that I made with the Mondo Hydrangea and Mondo Peonies from Ellen Hudson. Next, another thing, my mom loves these, so I thought I'd, I'd recommend this as a set to give somebody if you wanna put together a beautiful set for them to make some watercolors where they don't have to actually know how to draw. These Art Impressions ones. There's a lot of different types of things. I'm gonna use the wooden gate here, but you can also get different kinds of containers. They all come with little flowers. There's um, barns and bridges and things, but these other two sets are really helpful companions to that. So they have different grasses, different flowers, so you can mix a lot of different things and make a variety of scenes. A little set of these acrylic blocks helps when they're tiny things, but you also are gonna need a large block so that if there's a large image in the set, you wanna have one that's large enough for them to, to use for this. And I'm using Tombow markers. There's a set of, just a small set that I'm gonna link on my, my web, on my, on my web, on my blog, and in the description down below. Um, so you can get just a good selection of colors from this one particular general set and you color onto the stamp itself, stamp it onto the paper, and then you take a brush. You can get them an aqua brush, but for these in particular, I recommend more of a regular brush. Number six, again, is a really good width for that. And then spread the color around from the stamped marker area and you can really get a beautiful watercolor look without having to do anything other than stamping and then doing a little bit of water right next to where that paint is. Now, there's also, like I said, a ton of different types of images, containers and all sorts of scenes and things that you can, you can really get sucked into it, so be careful. <laughs> that happened to me, I have a large collection of these. But you also want to go to YouTube and find some videos using those stamp sets, whatever stamp sets you give them, and have that list prepared. Put an email together so that on Christmas morning, all you have to do is hit send and say, hey, I gave you this thing and here's how you use it. So even if it's one of the Copic ones or you know this, this Art Impressions watercolor, um, Art Impressions has a lot of this watercolor on their website. I've got a few on mine, but you can get a lot of different ideas to give to your gift recipient so they know what to do with it. They don't have to go out and learn and research and stuff. Just give them what they need. Uh, nothing like Christmas morning being able to play with your toys while the kids do, right? So you want to make sure you give them that opportunity. So here I'm just stamping some greens and watercolored them after it dried. I stamped some flowers over top of it, just doing some layering of different stamps, a little bit of masking so that I could get some little green bushes there at the bottom and then add water to it very easy to do with these and to end up looking like a watercolorist after you get them done because they, they can be really beautiful and very relaxing so this is a, a great gift idea that you can give them a whole packet of things make sure you give them some paper to work with as well and on the block you can even take a little bit of color and watercolor from that to paint the ground and then make a card out of it where they can just make a scene out of it. They don't even have to be a card maker to use these. 
because they're just quite beautiful. Next, I want to talk about the Misty, because if you have a friend who knows stamping and stuff, they're going to probably already know about the Misty and how much they want one. But I thought I'd show them to you just to be sure. The small one or the large one. There's a mini Misty in the large one. The, the large one I use more because you can get two images on it. And I do so many scenes that that helps me. And I also like background stamps. So I picked out a couple background stamps to share with you and some thoughts on on being able to stamp really well. The mini Misty doesn't always fit all the background stamps, so make sure you get one that's going to fit. But you put the stamp face down, if you haven't seen a Misty, put it face down and it has a lid on it that will pick up that, that stamp. It'll stick to the top. This one doesn't set all the way down though, so I'm gonna take the mat out from the inside so that it lays a little flatter and I get a better stamped image. So I'm checking it to make sure it works well. And then all I have to do is put my paper in. I've got it held down by magnet so it doesn't move. Magnets come with it. And then I put my ink onto my stamp. And I'm stamping onto watercolor paper. If you've ever tried stamping a big solid image like this on watercolor paper, you probably were really mad because you ruined your watercolor paper because it came out like this. Well, guess what? You can just keep stamping. And I stamped this, I think it was like seven or eight times and finally got this. So look at how beautiful and dark and rich that image is. It's on watercolor paper, so you could take a pen and fill it in, but I use brusho over the background of it to make this beautiful scene and then some white pen to add some snow to it. And I didn't even add the sentiment on the outside, I put it on the inside. There's another background image that I used to make a panel and colored it with my Copics. And I just had fun filling in colors, a little darker around the edge of each hexagon. And then flowers, like who doesn't love to just sit and color a whole page of flowers, all different kinds of colors. So lots of fun you can have with images, uh, big background images. Next up, I wanted to show you the Archon products. There's a 20% discount if you use my coupon code. So Christmas is a good time for that sort of thing. This is a stand and it can hold your phone for making videos. So if you know somebody who has always said they wanna make videos, this is a great way to get started. I put my iPhone 6 in here and it holds that, it holds a bunch of different size phones. You can also get an adapter that will be linked down there as well that will hold a camera. You just have to weight down that base or else it'll all tip over. But I'm just gonna use my iPhone for this because you don't have to have a fancy camera to get started making videos if that's what you'd like to do. And you can see I'm just coloring away underneath. I have it all lined up and I have it well lit so that I get some good lighting and I can put my markers face up, my marker caps. If you don't wanna add the little annotations that I do with text, you can just put the markers there. And you can see this is the video from the iPhone 6, high quality, good, good lighting and everything. So you don't have to have something fancy. You will need to learn a little bit about how to edit videos, but other than that, these Archon things are really good. I also have an Archon phone mount in my car and I'm going to link you to that one in the doobly-doo as well. Just make sure you take advantage of the 20% before Christmas. All right, so that is it for me and my gift giving ideas. I have probably more in my head, but for now that is plenty and I will see you guys next time. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.